Hello and welcome back to another episode of League Talk, the podcast all about management, coaching, performance and all things League of Legends. My name is AJ. On today's podcast, we have Schalke's analyst, Fire. So firstly, welcome. Thank you so much for your time, Fire. I really appreciate you giving over uh, your time and attention for this. That's great. Um, but why don't you give us a little introduction to you? Okay. Uh, first of all, thank you for the invitation. So today yeah, I'm Faya. Uh, uh, I'm Schalke's analyst. I've been like analyst for professional teams for around three years. I started like in regional leagues, like in the Spanish league, then French league. And this summer split, I went to Schalke for my first LDC experience, and it went pretty good. Amazing. So you said you were in regional leagues before that, right? Yeah. Where, where, who, what teams did you work with in Spain? I was in Kiev and mm -hmm. then Ga Gamers Origin in France. Oh, okay, so Gamers Origin being quite a big one for Spain at the time, I'm sure as well. How long have you sort of been uh, been entrenched in league? Were you playing it for ages when you were young, or, or how how long have you been in the game for? Mm, I mean, I started with. I mean, now I'm 20, so when I started with all this uh, an analyst thing. I was like 17. Wow. Then, yeah, I mean, I was like too bad for being a player. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I always liked it, like a lot of about the scouting and that things, even when I was like playing football. Mm -hmm. Then I started to, to look for a, a way to be an analyst oh, uh, okay. in League of Legends. Yeah. Yeah, I started like really, really young. Interesting. So you always knew that uh, sort of scouting, you said from football, like analysts, that was the sort of route that you wanted to go down? Yeah, I went uh, with my colleagues in, in Spain. Mm -hmm. We were uh, with, with the joke that like the scouting thing is like like a autist world, yeah. world you know, like, <laughs> yeah. you have like, to spend like a lot of hours looking yeah, yeah, for, yeah. for things, like uh, how to do like the best documents, even yeah. for uh, staff to to like know everything and mm -hmm. also the players and yeah, I don't know I really it's like a job that you don't enjoy you, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you can do it yeah, amazing that's so interesting because you, you hear a lot of the time that people uh, you know players and playing the video game is always glorified because for whatever reason that's where the glory comes from that's where the, you know you hold the trophies yeah. you get paid and things like that and then it sort of coaches because they're the back room but to, to have the, the drive and, uh, to want to be an analyst and go down that route is really really interesting but uh, sort of one of the big questions that I often ask people on this podcast is it's similar to the one that I'm going to ask now and the reason is is because uh, Esports being so new, it's quite difficult to really understand what your job actually is. So from a coach's perspective, yeah. a coach for one team could be completely different for what a coach does for another team. And it's the same with the players in some circumstances. Players have certain roles. Um, but the analyst role is one that definitely isn't easy to define or pigeonhole to exactly what the job description may be. So when it came to your work, maybe uh, we could contrast and see what it's like compared to regional leagues. but Currently at Schalke, what does your sort of job entail for them? I mean, uh, okay, my job is mostly like a data analyst work. Mm -hmm. I work a lot with data, work like the API, uh, like tr uh, tracking uh, every single pro player. Mm -hmm. uh, that thing's tracking our old performance, doing uh, scouting reports. I mean, my job is mostly data. But, uh, uh, Sometimes do some like in-game analysis, sure. that just when when it's needed. You know, I mean, my job was uh, the job description was data. Uh, I talked with the staff. I wanted data, and mm -hmm. I do data. But yeah, as you say, like for every team is completely it's different. different yeah. I mean, some team they they ask you for being like uh, every screen like uh, discussion like. Uh, Important new things, mm -hmm. uh, strategies, but here I was just like in the data analyst position. Okay, and was that similar to your jobs in Spain? Is do you think that's where your strength is as an analyst working with data? Uh, I mean, in Spain I have like some teams I have to be like uh, also this in-game an analyst, mm. like mostly for like jungle pathings and that's it. Okay, I uh, been like I was like maybe like a jungle positional coach mm -hmm. uh, like a bit uh, but yeah, most of the teams I work only with data so yeah it's 
Maze Drone. Amazing. And did so I know this is a bit of a bizarre question, but did you have any sort of past experience with data? We did you do it at school or like any qualifications in anything like that? Mm, not really. Mm. I mean, uh, when when I started, I was in in a school, mm-hmm. so I started to to learn on yeah like straight myself. away yeah. So but then when I joined like the university, uh, I was doing the like, the computer the computer science. Mm-hmm. So then I started to learn more and more. And uh, now I I left all the computer science yeah, yeah, yeah. thing and now in a data science degree oh, okay so, so you're yeah, studying as, I, as you do the job as well yeah wow because i mean i enjoy this like so much that mm-hmm. it's like what i want i mean yeah i i don't want to be maybe like a data analyst or data scientist mm-hmm. for esports like all my life but maybe for football or basketball mm-hmm. i think i think it's pretty much the same mm-hmm. and it's also really interesting and it's for the competition you know yeah 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 Interesting. So one of the questions I was actually going to ask you later was, um, do you do you live with the Schalke guys? Like, is this a part? But I presume you're in Spain, are you? Is that where you do your degree and all of that work with data? Uh, from yeah, an I, point of view? Um, it was summer, summer split. Ah. So yeah, it was, I was there in Berlin with the Schalke guys. I was mm-hmm. in-house. Uh, and yeah, I mean, this, this was like my, the most big experience I had because yeah. It was it was there, you know. Yeah. And you're young as well. You're only 20. My god. Yeah. Amazing. That's really interesting. Yeah. But just to give some background to Schalke and to remind any people that are listening uh, that either don't remember or weren't necessarily watching uh, Schalke, Schalke ended the LEC split at fourth. Un- unfortunately, you guys lost out to Splice for third, which gave Splice the opportunity to go to the group stages uh, of Worlds. And now the quarterfinals through all of the play-ins and all that sort of stuff. Um, but from your point of view, if you were look- to look back on the season, how did you feel personally the season went? You know, this split this season, what were your takes out, takeaways from it from Schalke's point of view? Uh, uh, every time I watch the, the world, I feel like really frustrated because I really think we we should be there. Mm-hmm. But I mean, the the whole split was pretty good. Uh, we went from, I mean, in the spring split, they didn't even qualify for for the playoffs mm-hmm. and we end up going to Athens for the finals uh, losing in the final of the gauntlet mm-hmm. so I mean it was a good experience overall but it's kind of frustrating to to lose in the in the final match yeah for sure so wh- when you say you're looking at Worlds and you're frustrated is that because you think that your team could have done really really well at Worlds where does the frustration mm-hmm. lie there and not not really, really well, but I think we could perform like splice or yeah. maybe better. But this is true that over last weeks in the LEC, like the Fnatic best of five and the splice best of five mm-hmm. were really, really bad. Then we didn't deserve. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, it really I think our team was pretty, pretty good. Amazing, because obviously Schalke uh, is a team that people. On the formation of the team, a lot of people were like, this team is going to do really, really well. Obviously, Upset being a massive, massive character. Um, I don't want you to necessarily throw anyone under the bus or anything like that. Um, but do you guys feel like you achieved what you wanted to achieve? Were, was fourth about right where you guys were thinking? Or was it Worlds, 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 you know? No, when I came to the team, uh, the goal was going to Worlds. Mm. We didn't even care about the... Uh, the split results sure. only going worse, but yeah, it was like the only task we have, yeah. and we failed. Mm. So unfortunately, we are we are not happy. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> but obviously, for people in the traditional sports world, and that's where my background lies, Schalke as an organization is huge. This is this is a one of the biggest football clubs in Germany, and has been for a really really long time. So. I'm interested. Obviously, their foray into esports has been through the League of Legends team. I'm not. In, I don't actually know if they've got any other uh, teams other than FIFA and and League of Legends. But um, from your perspective, working for an organisation like this must be amazing. But what is it like? Is it is it sort of translated across where all of this amazing stuff from the German football team is working like coinciding with the League of Legends team? What's it like working for Schalke? I mean, I can't compare it for, to another team because 
this was like my first LEC team. Yeah. But the whole experience was insane. Was mm. really, really, really good. Uh, I mean, we have like all insane office mm-hmm. where we are with the academy team and the LDC team, also all the staff. Uh, I know the the house was also really really same. I don't know. It was like when you imagine like a a big organization in league. Mm-hmm. This was like what you this have in mind, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, must be super proud to 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 don like a Schalke jersey, right? Because uh, yeah. being such a huge org, apart from all of the shirts that you wear. I mean, I'm really I'm a big football fan. Yeah. So going to Schalke, a really big Was organization the in the Bundesliga. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Amazing. I was going to say it must be an honor to don the jersey for the League of Legends team as well, but all of the shirts you wear, you, <laughs> every photo I've seen, you've got these shirts like you've got them today. Yeah. <laughs> um, but one thing that I haven't seen much from, and you did sort of touch on it there, and I'd like to go into a little bit more detail if we can, um, is the infrastructure for Schalke. So when I talk about infrastructure, it, it, I'm interested if you could shed some light on what the players, the staff have in terms of facilities in terms of diet in terms of nutrition in terms of other stuff like what do you guys as a team have to support the players okay so obviously we have the the coach and the analyst mm-hmm. uh, the normal staff uh, the manager we have like a psychologist too mm-hmm. they're in the in the office every day uh, we have uh, obviously the food that's what's like really really strict control I okay. have like I mean we could eat whatever you we want mm-hmm. but the food they were given to us was like really healthy food uh, just to control like all performance uh, then of course we have like uh, the gym pretty close to office mm, then the, the in the office we have like almost everything we also had like one some weeks one guy coming to the office to do as like some stretch and yeah things. like yoga sort of so, stuff pilates that sort of stuff yeah mm-hmm. okay so clearly loads and loads of stuff to support the players right is, is there one that shone to you as like damn this this is the one that's being uh utilized best for us did you guys think that you know did you perceive that diet was most impactful on their performance did you think it was the exercise where where were you thinking for some of the like if you were to rank the best infrastructure maybe Mm, I'm not really sure, but I don't know. I think like the like having everything was like the you have the whole pack. Sure. And this is what makes you to perform well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I so, I can say like uh, like one specific thing is yeah. like the the most important, you mm-hmm. know. Mm-hmm. And the uh, the house itself. What was the what was the house that you guys lived in? Did you have a, a gaming office and a house, and you sort of came to work uh, like that? We have like the gaming office, uh, one house for the LDC team, mm. and another one for the academy team. What did you think about that? Having the because obviously in esports, uh, maybe like a year ago, two years ago, it was really really normal to have a gaming house, right? Rather than yeah. somewhere that you live and then somewhere that you work. Um, but I'm interested. What's your take on on that sort of conundrum? Mm, I'm not sure, but I think like having like the house and the office is mm-hmm. really good because you have like the the separation. Yeah, and it's also like like some of of the players value like a lot, Be, and because in the house you have like your own play, own space to play or doing whatever you want, and it's not in the office it's not the same. Mm-hmm. You have like your PC like with. Uh, everyone next to everyone yeah. maybe you're not like so comfortable to play solo queue or doing whatever oh, you want okay. but yeah i mean i don't know i really i was really comfortable with the separate thing mm-hmm. so i think it's, it's like the best amazing because uh i think there's there's so many interesting points about that and i personally i'm super happy that teams have gone more to this like as you say this separation between you live in one place and then you you commute you come into work you know um, but if you if you were to sort of look back at the year again, so obviously you, you said that you guys had the task of worlds and unfortunately you didn't make it. Um, but if you were to sort of analyze the performance in, in a way, thinking about from your perspective, what did Schalke do really, really well? 
and what could they improve on um, from your perspective? So I think, like, you know, we were, like, really, really well prepared you know, when a new patch was coming. Like, mm-hmm. every, every week we have, like, the new patch. We were performing really well. Mm-hmm. But maybe we have, like, a lack of consistency with the patch or something with the other teams who are, like, adapting. Mm-hmm. Because, for example, like, the, the end of the split, we play, like, a whole month in the same patch. And then we started like so high, winning in the playoffs versus Vitality and Rogue. But then we went like really, really down. We lose into three old Splice and Fnatic. Mm-hmm. I think it's, it was because, I don't know, we were like doing maybe the same. I don't know. We have like kind of lack of adaptation or something. I'm not really sure, but I think we were really good at adapting to new things. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. We missed something uh, when we had to work in the same patch for a long time. Mm-hmm. Because I mean, our whole performance was like so high during the, yeah. the whole split. But then the last two weeks we went like Downhill. really, really down. Yeah. I don't know. It's difficult as well because the you know this is something that I always draw on because uh, I coach tennis that's the that's my role at the moment is uh i'm university but also studying uh coaching tennis and in tennis you never have like the racket and the ball are generally the same okay so it might get a little bit lighter it might get a little bit heavier but the ball for example never changes the court that you play on never changes in league every two weeks every one week every month the game can be completely remodeled i'm interested because like patches obviously is probably a big part of your role as well right from a data analyst like maybe finding out a little bit as to what other people are playing on this current patch and things like that how did you find dealing with these like constant uh, you know overhauls and changes of the game from uh, a data analyst point of view i mean it's like part of my work of course. Mm. so i i don't know for me i really enjoy when a new patch is coming because okay. you have like a lot of new data mm-hmm. uh, a lot of uh, is the, like the moment when you talk with the players the most is like okay this is like this champion is going really really high on on uh, win rate and also like people is picking it a lot more what do you think about it uh, then is when you like talk most with the players I think also like uh, working with with Dylan Dylan Falco mm-hmm. uh, with these things he's really really good like anal- analyzing new new patches mm-hmm. i mean i was really really surprised because he was really good really hard worker with new patches who were coming and i really learned a lot from him mm. and ab- about it because he was really good mm-hmm. so talk me through the process so um for you as a team the new patch comes out let's say it's 9 uh, 21 and you guys are getting back into the swing of understanding patches. So the patch has just come out and you know you know exactly what's happening. How does that now look for you guys? You know, do you read the patch notes and then just test stuff in game? How does it work? Uh, first of all, of course, we read the, mm-hmm. the new patch and then we uh, take all the data from the last patch and we, we let like one, two days for the new patch uh, normally, because uh, that week we are playing in the old patch, so yeah. we can like spend like some days uh, waiting for for the new data, mm-hmm. and then when one two days the data is more stabilized, you know, like like maybe the first day people is like whoa 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 what are these sure. things, but the next day everything is going more normal, yeah, and then you you can take the data and then you compare the data. I mean if uh, for example, who was the rework? It was like a rework in a uh, Mordekaiser. Kaiser. More the Kaiser. Ah. Uh, when the when the rework, like the whole champion won like around ten percent of win rate, more, more of win rate. Mm-hmm. That was okay. This yeah, yeah, really crazy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, like so, then you know, okay, this champion is really really OP. Mm-hmm. We should try it on the scrims. Or and because then sometimes maybe uh, uh maybe your player is saying like uh, okay I think this champion should be but then you look for the data and say 
uh, okay, we can try one or two games, but sure. we, are, we are not sure. Mm -hmm. But for example, with Kiana, uh, yeah. it, this really happened. Uh, like, or uh, Abedage and Odoame were saying, like, this champion was really, really OP, mm -hmm. but the data was saying, like, he was, like, oh. pretty good. Yeah, no? okay. Uh, but then we tried some scrims, uh, we really decided it was a coin flip champ. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you were <laughs> uh, right. The data was right. <laughs> and and then uh, we tried also in the jungle, uh, but yeah, when we were playing Kiana, for example, like our games were pretty coin flip, mm. and if we didn't have like a like a really big fight when Kiana went really ahead. The game with uh, Kiana started to be like sure. pretty useless, mm -hmm. and then we decided that that wasn't like our playstyle. Yeah, and we started to to look for other things, you know. But mm -hmm. the, sometimes the players are right, sometimes but the data is mostly right. Yeah, so I was gonna. That was my players. next question. That's what <laughs> I was gonna ask you. Who's who's more right than not? The players or the data? <laughs> Which do you side with now? <laughs> I mean, most of the times, uh, the player says the same of the data, you know? Uh, okay, uh, they match. Yeah. And sometimes there are difference, but uh, with the difference, the data is mostly right. Okay, okay. Because, <laughs> you know, when you look back on this split, and I'm sure we'll get onto what your sort of future plans are. When you look back on this split, obviously working for your first LEC team and just generally working for an LEC organization that also has the backing of a famous German football team is going to give you some incredible lessons, I'm sure. So alongside this, working in sort of full-time uh, offline, as you, I'm sure you were doing before, yeah. previous analyst work, is going to enhance your, your sort of your learnings even further. But I'm interested, again, retrospectively, what were the big sort of learnings? Was there any moments that were like these massive eureka moments? You know, you said you learned a lot from Dylan Falco. So what were the big learnings, the big takeaways from your time working in the LEC? I think I learned the most during the playoffs. Mm -hmm. Just, I mean, just like working, uh, as I said, with Dylan. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's the coach I work with. He was like the most prepared. Mm -hmm. uh, he was like always like watching new things, uh, trying to get more data, more information. Mm -hmm. uh, he was when he wanted data, he asked me. So I need what data a coach need to prepare uh, players uh, yeah. or a big match, you know. Mm -hmm. Then for me, that was like one big learning, and also like the whole split learning from the players mm -hmm. uh, about the game was really really big I mean because we have players like Trick he is Huge. really insane about the yeah. game uh, Upset uh, Odo Amne uh, they know a lot they have been in LEC like a lot of seasons mm -hmm. so Ignar uh, I mean my team were like a lot of uh, big names huge players. Yeah, yeah experience as well right I mean but sometimes like these names they, they are like a big name but they don't participate a lot in mm -hmm. reviews or they just let others guide them. Sure. You know? But these guys were really big leaders. Amazing. So it must have been a super interesting environment to work in. Were your other teams similar to that? Were they did they have big leaders like that or was it a bit more uh, you know, when you were with Gamers Origin, was it different to that sort of uh, leadership style that, that nah, of course dynamic? it was different because I, I mean I was remote. Mm. So you are remote analysis. Everything is completely different. Okay. So that's why I think this was my most valuable experience mm. because I could like be with the team uh, 24 hours yeah. uh, of the day. Uh, like, not you don't even need to talk with them, you know. Mm -hmm. But just hearing them discussing league things. Uh, you learn a lot just from that. Yeah. yeah. Amazing. And uh, I know this isn't a, a question we discussed, and hopefully it's okay to ask you. Um, but if there was, so say I want to get into data analysis, uh, analysis, sorry, um, and I want to become uh, a data analyst just like you do, you, your work is, what would be some piece of advice or tips or 
do you have anything that you would recommend to people that are in a position that you would have been in when you were 16, 17? Uh, first of all, it's like the patience. You okay. need to be really patient because uh, when you start to try, yeah, just like uh, your documents or your whole programs or everything, everything you need, mm -hmm. uh, everything is going to fail. Okay. <laughs> Everywhere you were going to to stop, you, yeah. you want to stop. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, you some patient. Uh, if you're patient, you like maybe I don't know. You don't have to be patient your whole life. But yeah, of course. <laughs> just like the first weeks, mm -hmm. and then you will learn a lot. Of, if you start from scratch, also ask for help. Uh, everyone. I don't know the the other analysts, but for example, I got like a lot of DMs uh, asking me for help, mm. and I try to help like almost everyone. I, sure. Okay. I mean, sometimes there are, <laughs> there are some guys that come that like, uh, can you please give me some documents of you? Then I know. Who... <laughs> yeah. No, bro. But, I mean, if, <laughs> if you want help, I can help, <laughs> I can yeah. help you in some way, you know. But... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Only some ways. But, yeah, I was ask for help i asked a lot of for help mm. so when i was young uh, i was like for example like i started with a guy that now stopped an analysis but uh, he entered me to to Kiev in spain so yeah he also i learned wow. a lot i'm uh, also i mean still working with a guy that i i started with we were like pretty bad analysts mm -hmm. back back in the days but now he is like really insane at coding and everything. And mm. It really helps me a lot. And also, for example, when like one or two years ago, uh, Tim Lucas analyst. Mm -hmm. Now is he's Spanish too. He was in a Spanish team. Okay. And I started to talk with him because I, I don't know he's a Spanish. And sure. He's good. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, of course. <laughs> uh, and asking asking him for help. Mm. And everything. And most of the people is really nice and will help you. So always, always, if you think you need help, ask for it. Yeah. Uh, sure. Maybe if you don't think you, if you think you don't need help, you need it. I mean, yeah. there's always someone is better than you, and will help you to achieve your goals. Amazing, really interesting. And of course, you know, we're getting to that stage of the of the split now where you're currently exploring options for an analyst in 2020. Um, uh, of course, this is you know this is could just be a simple exploration and you're just seeing what's out there sort of thing but uh what are you hoping for out of this sort of like exploration period and what offers were you were you looking to entertain i mean my first option is of course to resign with yeah with Schalke mm -hmm. because i i was like really really comfortable as mm -hmm. you said uh i think i had like everything i needed so yeah, of course. I I also like a lot to to stay in a team for for the the long way. Yeah, long term. Because, yeah. Because I think that if you stay more time, you can like reach more. Mm -hmm. It's just my thing. Sure. So, yeah, if I don't resign, I don't know. I will try to be in LEC next year mm -hmm. or LCS. Mm -hmm. Let's see what happens. But yeah, I think I will, I will stay in. In Sargis, if everything goes well. It's plan, yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Super, super interesting. Um, I'm sorry I can't ask more about sort of data uh, analysis and things like that because uh, maths is and uh, numbers is not my strong point. So <laughs> I apologize that I can't ask more sort of in depth questions about that sort of stuff. Um, but maybe this gives you the opportunity to talk a little bit more about that. So one, the sort of standard final question that we ask on this podcast is, what is one thing that you can teach myself or the viewers from your world? Now, this can be absolutely anything that springs to mind. It could be uh, a bit of Spanish. It could be uh, what you've learned in Schalke, something that you can give to people to sort of improve in solo queue or something like that. Whatever springs to mind uh, to answer that question. Okay, so I don't know. As like the whole analysis world is really abstract. Yeah. So um, I don't know. Uh, as I said, if you want to to be analyst or mm -hmm. something you can learn from analyst is the organization. You if you are you have to have everything 
in, in the, the right place. place. Yeah. So yeah, I think it's like probably the most important thing because mm-hmm. if you are if you are not organized, you're going to lose your mind. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so this is like a most big thing from the analysis world. Uh, they also like uh, I also I think I pretty recommend like the help thing but that's like the going to through people to get contact uh, it's really important mm-hmm. yeah. for example I, I joined Schalke because I did my my application and the academy coach and the and Dylan were, were like looking all the the analyst options mm-hmm. and the academy coach uh, is Chris I worked with him in, in Spain in mm-hmm. Kiev and he said okay uh, his application is really shit, but I know this guy. Is, yeah. Is, is okay. Good. So, so then, I mean, if it was for my application, yeah, I would never, never, never be in Got it. Interesting. <laughs> wow. Because the, the first call I I have I have with the the man I not the man I it's like the esports director. Mm-hmm. Uh, he uh, Tim. Mm-hmm. He told me okay application was shit <laughs> I, I, I I can't show this to the Schalke people so if you really want to join Schalke I need a good application uh, just explain who you are uh, what's your background uh, what you do show me some things I can show to the Schalke people to combine them and yeah. you're the right person you know wow. because because uh, he told me because uh, uh, the coaches told me you are good I can't know you're good with this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see what you mean. Yeah. Amazing. That, so that was that was a bit of a stroke of luck then that they they sort of gave yeah. you the opportunity because in a lot of worlds that would just be like, oh, his application's garbage, gone, get out. You know. Yeah, but what's because of this? Mm. Just contacts and you know, even yeah. if you are working in a regional team mm-hmm. or everything, yes, uh, do everything you can, like because. Maybe that coach or that person you are working with, that player, maybe since a year or something mm-hmm. in a big organization you want to join, or I don't know, anything, uh, everything, you, anything, any place you want to to go, mm-hmm. and then having that guy knowing that you are good at your work mm-hmm. is really important. Amazing. Well, look, that was all of the questions that I wanted to ask you for today. So firstly, I want to thank you again for, for giving over your time and, uh, and coming on to talk about your super interesting work, man. I really appreciate you giving the time for that. Um, but I want to give you the opportunity. So if uh, people want to get in contact with you, if they have questions about data or uh, being an analyst or anything like that, or uh, where's the best place to get in contact or find you? Yeah, of course, my, my Twitter. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's firegg mm-hmm. with a one instead of a five. And um, there is also my email, uh, contact, uh, contact fire dot s. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I mean it's also my Twitter, but yeah, as uh, I my DMs are always, always open, open for everyone. Maybe sometimes I took like a time to <laughs> to yeah. answer because sometimes I'm busy. You're busy, but, of yeah. course. Amazing. No, thank you very much. No, what I'll do is I'll put your Twitter and uh, and that down in the description. So if people do want to get in contact with you, uh, if you check down below, you'll be able to find all of that information. Uh, but I hope you guys have enjoyed the episode. Again, Fire, thank you so much for giving over your time and uh, your knowledge as well. It's super interesting to find it. And I hope everyone listening has got as much value out of that as I have. So thank you very much for listening. Thank you very much for watching, depending on where you are. And I hope you have a wonderful day. We'll see you on the next one.